In order to create movement in the virtual set, tracking is required. Though VizRT does offer trackless solutions. Viz Virtual Studio supports all major camera tracking solutions. The types of tracking are optical, image-based, and mechanical. Mechanical tracking places sensors or tracking heads on a camera rig. The tracking heads are placed on all moving parts. Some measure positional movement, whereas others measure rotational movement. By combining all the movements and applying them to a mathematical model of the camera rig, the final position and direction of the camera can be calculated. Mechanical tracking systems are very stable and require little maintenance and are extremely accurate. The, the biggest uh, advantage with mechanical tracking is it's the accuracy you get from, uh, from the system. And that gives you very good tracking on a virtual studio. Optical tracking systems use multiple cameras or a grid of reflectors to triangulate a camera's position in the studio. The information is captured by a secondary system that sends the data to Viz Virtual Studio. They are very flexible in allowing cameras of all types to be used, including handheld cameras. An optical tracking system is a good idea when you have a large studio area and you might have multiple cameras. And you could also have objects being tracked in the studio. The presenter could have some kind of uh, tracking object in his hand and you can show whatever you like tracked on this object. Image-based tracking uses a scan model of the area as a reference. It matches this model with the movement of the camera. The result is a flexible tracking system that can be used in any environment, including outdoors and in stadiums. We have the tracking of the cameras completely covered, so we get very accurate positions uh, in 3D space and we get very accurate directions from our preferred vendors. But what differs every time uh, you mount a lens into a new camera body are a set of parameters which influence the believability of the virtual set greatly. I mean, things like uh, the center shift of a lens or the, the way how it is mounted on the camera body and relative to the CCD may not seem to be significant, but if you add up all those little errors, it will result in a larger error in the end, which will be visible in the final result. Presenters in the studio can control content in the virtual set using custom interfaces and tablets, touchscreens, or remote clickers. We can move objects around in 3D space, controlled by the um, anchors. We can pull stuff out of the floor. We can make it uh, appear in front of them. Specialized tracking objects can be created for the presenter to have a great deal of control over immersive objects. Other types of tracking systems can detect the movement of the presenter to give them gesture-based control over the virtual set content. And then you need a way to send this tracking data to this. And in this, in the scene, we have interactive 3D objects which can then be triggered. Every lens shows a different field of view behavior when you zoom in or move the focus. And this must be calibrated by us. If you want to do a lot of wide shots and want to show big studios, you will use a wide angle lens. If you want to do a lot of tailor shots, you will use a, a tailor lens. The important thing is that all this needs to be calibrated in this. Virtual sets use chroma keying to separate the background from the presenter. Chroma keying is the process of compositing two sources of video together based upon color hues. Green and blue are most commonly used due to the fact that they differ greatly in hue from human skin tones. These days we have more green screens than blue screens because clothing is more often blue than green. The disadvantage of a green screen is that you have a lot of color spill on the skin of the talent, which need to be removed after the shot, so you need to do a color correction on the image, which causes a big amount of makeup which you have to use on the talent. TV2 Norway has chosen to use blue for their chroma key wall. We have found that in our small studio here, we uh, benefit from using a blue screen instead of a green, just because the spill light bouncing off the wall, it's more acceptable to the audience to have a slightly blue presenter than a slightly green presenter. That being said, uh, a green wall would technically be better for keying 
we have found that the blue screen is the solution that we have found working best. There are various options when it comes to creating a suitable chroma key wall. For professional TV studios, it is most common to build a permanent infinity cyclorama studio. This includes a smooth curve from wall to floor, which allows for an infinite and seamless backdrop. Cloth is also an option that is washable and easy to transport if looking for a portable backdrop. However, cloth does not offer the ability to have a smooth, curved wall that is most desired for virtual set production. Lighting is very important, not just for the highlights on the talent. The first basic is to have a really good lighting for an even lighting of your green screen. So therefore you need to set up uh, multiple lights. Even if you're in a small studio, one light is not enough. So you really have to flood your whole green screen uh, with light and uh, then you set, start setting up uh, highlights for your talent. In order to achieve a good key in the virtual studio, the chroma key wall must be evenly lit. And there has to be sufficient physical distance between the presenter and backdrop in order to avoid color spill. Lighting in a studio is the essence of uh, having a realistic uh, virtual set or not. You can model and uh, render as realistic as you want. If you don't have a good keying situation, it will never look realistic. In the VIS engine, we have a very good chroma keyer with a lookup table. It works very nice, but some customers want external keyers like Ultimate or Crystal Vision. They have properties that uh, gives us the flexibility to key the video signal really good in a short amount of time. And that's essential to, to be able to do that in a news environment where things are to be keyed in, let's say, 10 seconds. If you use the internal keyer, everything is built in into the engine. The delay, the keying, the output, everything is done in the engine, so you need no additional hardware. 